Good morning and welcome to the Cluster National Networking Event. This is a, an event that's been organised by both the Scottish Government and Healthcare Improvement Scotland. My name is Gordon Black, I'm a GP, I work in the middle of Edinburgh and I also work in the primary care division as a GP advisor and also as a clinical lead for primary care transformation and I'll be chairing this morning's session. Um, thanks so much everyone for coming, it's been a terrible day out there and yet Despite that, we've actually got more people here today than we actually expected, and the energy in the room is amazing. We've all been commenting on it. It's been uh, fantastic to see so many people and so much energy. First of all, what's the purpose of today? We have spent a bit of time um, thinking about why we'd want to have a national event, bringing clusters together, and essentially it was about bringing people together for a supportive environment, to get people to come round, sit round the table, and have a shared learning and network experience today. We also hope to gain a better understanding of the current requirements for a cluster working in cluster development. So there's people here who have had some experience of cluster working already and people who are just in that, the beginning of the journey of cluster working. And also to consider future opportunities for primary care transformation in working in partnerships with practices and health and social care partnerships together. There's good representation from both GPs and health and social care partnerships here today. But as one of my colleagues said, really what today is about is about mustering your clusters. So, that's what we've done today. We've brought people together to share and learn together. Quickly, who's here today? Um, we've mostly got exactly who we wanted in the room today. We've got GPs and CQLs coming together, sharing their experiences so far. We've got managers and admin people from health and social care partnerships. We've got medical and clinical directors and improvement advisors. Um, we've also got multidisciplinary team here. We have practice nurses, practice managers. Uh, interestingly, one person was down as a solicitor, so just be careful who you're sitting next to. Um, and we also have some pharmacists here today as well. Uh, so a good representation on exactly the kind of people you would expect to be here for the event. The event uh, has uh, a programme on the table, which is consisting uh, of um, uh, keynote speakers. So we've got the keynote speakers at the table here, very uh, illustrious group of individuals to speak to us this morning. Um, we have an additional member. Uh, we were lucky to get David Lees uh, to uh, be able to come here today. He's Chief Officer from uh, Renfrewshire, and we're very grateful he was able to make it at relatively short notice to come today. All the speakers have been limited to 10 minutes, and most GPs will know that. Basically, I've asked them to bring one item only, but no doubt they'll bring more than one item. Uh, so we'll have one or two changes. Uh, David's going to be speaking after Alan, and also we've got uh, a slight change in that Gregor uh, is going to probably have his session, which was going to be the end of the day. We're going to bring that up at, so just before lunch. That's hopefully just so we can finish a little bit early with the weather being so bad today. So we have keynote speakers, uh, we have opportunity for tabletop discussions, Brian Robson is going to run a session before lunch, and we're going to take questions at that point. So if you could please think of any questions throughout the whole morning, but while the keynote speakers are talking, uh, and take questions at the end of Brian's session. You also uh, have uh, identified which workshops you wanted to go to, and on your badges there should be three workshops hopefully, they'll be running this afternoon, and they're in order, so one after another and they'll be running just after lunch till we finish about uh, 20 to 4, hopefully. I'd also like to draw your attention to the marketplace we have. So out in the foyer, we have uh, 12 stalls, and I'll talk about that in a brief second. The panel of workshops you've uh, hopefully identified so, and got on your, your um, badges, so you should be able to know which workshops you're going to. If for any reason you don't, please ask members of the team who were at registration, and they'll direct you to your workshops later. The marketplace, say we've got 12 different uh, marketplace stalls and we'd encourage you to visit them, um, both during the coffee break and at lunchtime. And in particular, I'd like you to draw your attention to the Knowledge Hub site, which is just on the left-hand side as you go out of the, of the, the room. And Mark Hoskins is running that uh, stall. We currently have 160 members of the Primary Care Transformation Network, and we're hoping to get people here today to develop that network and join that network. A little bit about housekeeping. Uh, we have no planned fire alarms. There was one plan, but we've thankfully cancelled that because of the, the weather. Um, we have a Twitter hashtag, hashtag CQL event, and please feel free to contribute to that. Um, there's some filming going on. You'll see film cameras around the room, and if there's any issues about being filmed here today, please let a member of the team know, and we'll try and accommodate anyone who would rather not be involved in any of the filming. Timings, we're going to try and keep our timings. I've asked all the 
speakers to keep to time, including myself. Uh, but again, if you could be prompt back from coffee and from lunch, that would be that would be great to make the day run as smoothly as possible. Um, the other question, the other, apart from questions we have, we have an evaluation sheet on the tables, and we'd like to fill that in and take it with you, because obviously you'll move from here to the workshop, so if you could think about that today, because we're hoping to capture what your thoughts are of the day and what things you would like to go forward with uh, future events. So just lastly, to sum up, this is a wee bugbear, uh, a little bit of a request for myself. I was in a meeting last week, and within a few minutes, um, the phones were out, the laptops were out, just like the chap here. Uh, trying to keep it in the room as much as possible. Today is all about engaging together and contributing to the day to make it as successful as possible. I found this slide. So these, these chaps in the middle are completely oblivious to the fact they're walking down a beautiful bridge and there's things around about them. And hopefully today we can stay in the right-hand lane and stay focused on what we're here for today and contribute as much as possible. <coughs> okay. So I'll just finish there. I'd like to invite uh, Richard Fogo up, uh, who's the Deputy Director and Head of Primary Care at Scottish Government. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to see so many people here. Um, enormous energy in the room, and I would have liked to have said the most energy somewhere that I've experienced in a long time, but I'm afraid that's not true, because uh, I was at Easter Road last night. Uh, uh, I've probably alienated some of uh, the audience, but uh, also it sounds perhaps like I've got a, some winter virus. I don't. Um, I was just doing quite a lot of shouting and screaming last night, which I just wanted to bring into the room and admit. Uh, also, I'm not going to speak for very long. You'll be delighted to hear. I know very many of you might well have heard my presentation. Uh, and the presentations will be available. And I'm, I'm always very delighted uh, to speak to anyone who'd like to speak about stuff in more detail. But I, I just wanted to keep it a little bit more light. Um, this is fantastic, in a sense, to, for us all to be here. This is about conversations. I remember some of us last year when we were talking about the ending of the quality outcome framework, how we might approach some of the next steps. And, and I, I don't want to give you a, a message of, uh, of hope that doesn't have some real recognition of the pressures that you're all under. But in, in a sense, that makes this even more hopeful, because despite all the pressures you're under, there still seems to be tremendous recognition of the value of these conversations. And I remember when we were talking about how we might replace Quaff, we were thinking as civil servants tend to do about long winded gui guidance documents to help you understand how you could be you. And it takes us some time, I think, to recognize that it's not really our job to tell you how to do your job. And that maybe doesn't sound like a very important thing, but for us in government, I think it is a very important lesson. And so we took advice from some of the, the people at the table, uh, and we went, I think, with that encouragement into a more courageous space, which is that we've tried not to fill the void, because we've tried to let your voices begin to fill that space. We've tried very hard to do that. And I know that doesn't satisfy everyone, because I know that in some ways you want government to have a very strong voice, and around funding and commitment and backing of general practice, I know that's where you want our voice to be most strongly heard. But, but my judgment is that where you don't want our voice to be heard is in how you do your business. Um, and, and please tell me if that's wrong. And I can certainly knock up a few long-winded guidance documents if, if, if that would help you in any way, but my judgment is that it wouldn't. Um, so we are trying to provoke conversation. So when we were thinking about re the replacement for Quaff and we're thinking about the establishment of clusters, I think it probably was David, who's it's really lucky to have David here today, because I remember having a phone call. I was, uh, I was out with my kids one day and I had a phone call on a Friday afternoon with David. Uh, and David was just like the straw that broke the, broke the camel's back. He said, please think about this from a different way. Wouldn't it be great if over the next year you just encouraged people to get together, get to know and form clusters, begin to have conversations, and begin to think about some priorities and begin to think about how you might support that conversation rather than try and direct it. And as I say, that added very significant, and I want to thank David for that, con that conversation, because it added to the conversation I'd had with Alan, the conversation I'd had with Gregor and with Miles, uh, and that felt to me like uh, a full house. 
So I'm delighted you're here. This is about you talking to each other. Uh, I should also say I think it's probably important that we not have too many, unless you want them, national events, because you have to come an awful long way, take out an awful long, uh, big part of your, uh, your day to be here. But equally, I wouldn't want to be certain about that. If, if today is valuable to you to see what it, the conversation feels like across Scotland, then we can help facilitate that. But the conversations are mainly going to be local. But I still think there may well be some context within which we might want to talk to each other across Scotland, because this is a Scotland-wide conversation. The only other thing I really wanted to say was, some of you may have noticed this morning, I was delighted that Mr Mackay, the Finance Minister, took the occasion out of all the things that the Scottish Government are doing, he, he went to a practice in Edinburgh to announce the support we're putting in, national support, into this conversation through Brian and Ruth and the team in his, um, and through the conversation uh, with NSS around the support for list analysts. Now that's only one very small part of the support we can offer, but I was delighted from a government perspective that of all the things that Mr Mackay could have chosen to promote the message that the government wants to promote on today, which is stage three of the Scottish Government's budget, he, he chose to go to a general practice in Edinburgh and he chose to talk about the way in which you guys are leading public sector reform in Scotland. And just to say I don't in any way think that what's most strong about that message isn't that you are doing that despite the pressure that you're under. And that's what makes that message so particularly strong. Uh, it's not a message of people with a great deal of time in their hands to engage in innovation and creativity for its own sake. It, it's a powerful message about the need for reform and how coming together in this kind of way can help drive it. So I was delighted this morning that Mr Mackay chose the world that we inhabit to promote a broader message around public sector reform. And I'm, I'm sure Brian and colleagues here, I see Manira sitting down the front, can talk to you a bit more about what the support of Health Improvement Scotland and uh, the, the, the support that our uh, list analysts might provide to clusters in Scotland might mean to help facilitate your conversation. I had other slides. Uh, it was lots of diagrams. Uh, I'm not sure how interested you'd be in them. They are available to you. Um, I rather like the Harry Burns quotation. It's a nice photograph. Uh, I have to go today. I have to go, go back and deal with issues around uh, the budget, etc. But I, I wanted to be here. I want to wish you all the very best in this conversation. And I'm just no more than a, a, a very modest warm-up act to this illustrious panel. So please have a very good conversation. And you have the very best wishes of the Scottish Government and what you do. And I know that when you have the opportunity to meet the Cabinet Secretary and Ministers, they will also want to thank you for your engagement and your energy.